Our service begins on page one of the service leaflet. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Lord with you and also with you, let us pray. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings can be found on page one of the service leaflet. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, Yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them, as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other, until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. 
As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord God of gods has spoken. He has called the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion, perfect in its beauty, God reveals himself in glory. Our God will come and will not keep silence. Before him there is a consuming flame, and round about him a raging storm. He calls the heavens and the earth from above to witness the judgment of his people. Gather before me, my loyal followers, those who have made a covenant with me and sealed it with sacrifice. Let the heavens declare the rightness of his cause, for God himself is judge. from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians, found on page three of the leaflet. Our gospel is veiled. It is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let line, light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in singing our sequence hymn, hymn number 137 on page three of your service leaflet. What 
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved, listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. <clears throat> Come, Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of your faithful people with the power of your word. Amen. <clears throat> Many people enjoy family history and genealogy. They like to know something about the backstory of their relatives, what hardships or challenges or triumphs they may have faced, perhaps some family secrets or skeletons in the closet. They hope that in knowing something of their past, they will understand what has shaped and formed them in the present. If you've ever watched an episode of Finding Your Roots on PBS, you'll know that as the host Harvard historian Henry Louis Gates Jr. takes his often well-known guests through a tour of their family history, they make connections about their own personal qualities and characteristics. They see in their past events and forces that they see in their past events and forces that have shaped their identity, their self understanding and even their sense of purpose. Perhaps you have spent some time digging into your own family history and reflecting on how that may have influenced you. Maybe you recount family stories to keep alive the memory of those who have gone before you their accomplishments and trials, and the values they held dear. The telling of these stories are the epics of our ancestors, the overarching narrative that give a framework to our lives. We see this in popular culture as well, even when we think that or tend to think that everything around us is ephemeral of the moment, that we can't focus on anything longer than just a minute or two. Because when we hear a story about truth and goodness and justice and mercy, 
When that kind of story is being told, we get riveted. We hang in there no matter how long it takes to tell that story. Here are a few examples. The Lord of the Rings trilogy is 1,178 pages long, and the film version takes 11.2 hours to watch. The seven Harry Potter books, at least in the US version, are 4,099 pages long, and the eight movies are nearly 20 hours in length. All 11 Star Wars movies are a combined 25 hours and seven minutes to watch. And it took George Lucas nearly 40 years to tell this generation's long story. They are all epics and they grab our attention and our loyalty because they tell the truth about good and evil and righteous action human frailty, triumph, redemption, and transformation. The biblical narrative and the Christian faith are this same kind of epic. Now, often that sense of the Bible being an epic is hidden from us. Perhaps this is because we have trouble seeing the larger story while we are living it, or because we don't know enough of all the smaller sections that go to make up God's big story or how they all hang together. After all, in the King James translation of the Bible, there are 783,137 words in the 66 books of the Old and New Testament. That's a huge number of stories. And yet, they are all part of the big, overarching story spanning centuries, the meta-narrative of God's relationship with humankind throughout the generations, and continually trying to point us to the vision of love and goodness and wholeness that life with the Lord and creator of the universe can lead us to. This morning's gospel recounts an episode within the Christian epic that reminds us that we stand within a much bigger story. And it reminds us that transfer Jesus has taken Peter, James, and John up a mountain, presumably to have some quiet and dedicated time for conversation and reflection. Right away, we should hear a bell go off, as the gospel writer Mark would have been well aware. Mountains were places where people in the Bible went to worship and to have an encounter with God, as also was true of the wilderness or desert. So the scene was already set for something important to happen. And of course, something important does happen. Jesus is transformed or transfigured before the eyes of these, his closest followers. What that means exactly is hard to put words around, but it involves Jesus being suffused with the light and love and power of God in a way that was visible to them. He was different and yet recognizable. And in the midst of this experience, Moses and Elijah appear. Now, both of these Hebrew prophets and leaders had had their, their own very important and transformative mountain experiences. Moses first encountered God in the burning bush on what later tradition tells us is Mount Sinai. And it was there that Moses returned with the Hebrew people whom God had freed from their enslavement in Egypt. On that mountain, Moses received the covenant that was to form and shape the life of the people with God what we call the Ten Commandments. It then took 40 years, two generations, for them to be fully influenced and shaped by this law before they were ready to move into the land that God promised them. And then Elijah. Elijah, about 500 years after Moses, became a fugitive from the wrath of the evil Queen Jezebel. 
He had accused King Ahab of apostasy and idolatry by worshiping the Canaanite deities rather than Yahweh, I am who I am, as God revealed himself to Moses, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, Moses, and countless generations. And to make matters worse, Elijah had defeated the priests of these Canaanite gods in a contest. And then when they lost, he had slain them all, infuriating the queen, who was herself a worshiper of these Canaanite deities. So Elijah was on the run, and he eventually took refuge from Jezebel and from God in a cave on Mount Sinai only to encounter God there in the sound of sheer silence. Remember, not in the earthquake, not in the wind, but in the still small voice standing at the mouth of that cave. And Elijah returned to his ministry in Israel with renewed purpose and a renewed sense of God's presence. And at the end of his life, he passed his authority and the responsibility for continuing his mission on to his protege, Elisha. That's what it means for the mantle of Elijah to fall on Elisha. So the presence of Moses and Elijah on the mountain with Jesus give us a glimpse of God's big story, a reminder that Jesus' ministry was connected to God's purpose and that it also had a direction and a focus. For Peter, James, and John heading to Jerusalem after this time on the Mount of Transfiguration, heading to Jerusalem and what would be Jesus' eventual face-off with the religious and political authorities and the power of evil that took advantage of them. For Peter, James, and John, this experience of Jesus' transfiguration may have given them some ins insight, even if it didn't give them the clarity and the strength they needed to follow Jesus all the way to the cross. We hear a version of this transfiguration story every year on this Sunday before the start of Lent, whether it's Matthew or Mark or Luke, we hear some version of this story. And we hear it on the actual Feast of the Transfiguration on August 6th as well. But we hear and read and reflect on this story every year at this point for at least two reasons. The first reason is that it is a culmination of all the other stories in the season after Epiphany in which we see Christ being made manifest, being shown forth the truth of who Jesus is for all the world to see. The second reason to listen to this story before we begin Lent is because it is part of the epic that shapes and forms us as we make our own journey to the cross, to the tomb, and to the day of resurrection. Lent, after all, is a time of preparation a time of getting ourselves and our faith community ready to celebrate that most epic of events, God's defeat of sin and death in the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus. Disciplines and spiritual practices as personal sacrifice, like fasting from sweets or wine or Facebook, can all be very helpful, particularly if they are paired with some practice of generosity like donating to a food pantry the money that you would have spent on a meal with meat for which you have substituted a less expensive vegetarian option. Discipline and self-sacrifice can be good and holy, but having just lived through nearly a year of giving up things that are dear to us, we have had a lot of privation in one way or another, and some of us have had quite a heavy dose of this. So perhaps the better, more helpful practice this year would be to spend time looking back over all the ways that God has met us and taught us and sustained us over the last 12 months. And then ask ourselves how what we have been living through fits in 
with God's bigger story, however much you know of that. Ask how some of these ancestors in the faith, in the words of scripture and the lives of the saints, in the personal narrative of your own Christian heroes, ask how some of these ancestors in the faith have shaped and formed you and your faith and your discipleship. See yourself as part of the epic story of faith. Understand that there are people in the future who will look back on this time of your faith and your faithfulness and see in your story God's purpose and goodness and blessing during these many months and even over the course of your life. God has been writing another chapter in the Acts of the Apostles this past year. And you have your own gospel, your own good news of God in Christ that you could write or tell. And all of it is part of this epic journey of faith, whose goal is the transformation of human lives to a condition of joy and goodness and peace and love with and for God, the Lord and creator and sustainer of the universe. Let us pray. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery by the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up and things which had grown old are being made new and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made. Your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now continuing on page four, let us give our hearts to God in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
prayers of the people are found in the Book of Common Prayer, page 392, also on page 5 of your leaflet. Prayer requests can be placed in the chat function of Zoom or spoken aloud during the prayers. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for our, for our families, families, friends, friends and neighbors, and for those, and for those who, who are, are alone. alone. For this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth, for Archbishop Justin, for presiding Bishop Michael, for our Bishop Carlisle, for Vicki, our rector, and Sean, our priest associate, for the community of St. John Baptist, and for all bishops and other ministers, for all who serve God in his church special needs and concerns of this congregation, for the speedy, efficient, and adequate delivery of COVID vaccines, and for economic recovery and hope, for our parish ministries, especially our 12 baskets food ministry, and those on our parish prayer list, especially Aidan, Karen Cipollini, Charlotte Davis, Mary Davis, Stephen Flood, Suzanne Kosempel, Leslie, Dorothy, Malfatone, Cecilia McGrath, Ed Mink, Miriam, Dina Flood O'Rourke and her family, Prue Peterson, Ted Raymond, Edward Roller, Sigrid, Marcy Teal, Suzanne Traub, Phyllis Wallace, Amy Wilson, Kathy, Paul, and Pauly. Are there others? We pray also for Meg, whose husband died this week. We pray for Jennifer and for her father, for Alyssa, for Dina and Danny, for Judy Smith, and for Dorothy Sims. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy, mercy is, great. is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life, for our parishioners, Betsy and Chrissy Wallace, Kathleen and Gerard Walsh, Caitlin Walsh, Bill Ward, Janet Weaver, Lisa and Waring Webb, Ben, Wellerding and Mike Apollonis, Johannes and Henry, and for all God's blessings, which we now name. And we pray especially with thanksgiving on this Valentine's Day for all those who love us, all those who have loved us, and all whom we love. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, and that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. For those we name, Deb Don, Gladys, are there others? We pray especially for Sherry, who died this week, for Jim B, and for Joe Dillon, Joe Dillian. Lord, yet your loving kindness be upon them who put their, put trust, their trust in you. you. We pray to you also for forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. So uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, 
Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please unmute yourself for the passing of the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, and also with you. you. Please offer you. one another a greeting peace. of peace. Peace. Peace, everybody. Peace, peace be with peace. you. Peace be with you. Peace, Lord. Peace be with you. Jane. Peace. Life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make this earthly pilgrimage with us. So be swift to love and make haste to do kindness. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the holy and undivided Trinity, one God, be amongst you this day and forever. Amen. One in heart and one in mind and empowered by the Spirit, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please join me in singing our final hymn, hymn number 410, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven. I think you know it very well, so please sing out on page 8 of your service leaflet. Praise him for 